Hi, and welcome to part two of Kitchen Science from St. John's County Public Library Extension Services. I'm Karen, and today we're going to do some exciting science in our kitchen. So first we're going to start with some eggs. Now I need a hard boiled egg for our first experiment and I can't remember which egg was hard boiled and which one was raw. So I'm going to show you an easy way to solve that problem. First what you're going to do is you're going to lay your two eggs in question side by side and then I'm going to spin them. Now notice this one spins really fast and that one spins really so slow. Now I'm spinning them with the same amount of pressure. So why does this one spin fast and this one spins slow? Well, this is my hard boiled egg. And the reason why it spins faster is because when I hard boiled it, everything in here is a solid now. So when I spin it, the inside of the egg can't only move in one direction. The contents are not moving in all directions. So it spins really fast. In the raw egg, since it's still liquid inside, the contents of the egg are floating around. Therefore, it slows down the speed of the egg when I spin it. So this would be the hard boiled egg, and this is my raw egg. So I'm gonna put my raw egg over here, and I'm gonna show you a trick on an easy way to get a hard boiled egg out of its shell. Now, most of the time when I'm, I peel hard boiled eggs, I will just smash them up, and most of the um, shell cracks into a bunch of pieces, makes a big mess, and a lot of times the egg sticks to the shell. So I learned a trick. I'm going to gently tap one end of my egg, peel off a little bit of shell. This is going to be the end that I used to blow my egg out of. I'm going to gently tap the other end, and I'm going to peel off the shell, but a little bit bigger this time. I need it to be the width of the egg so that I can get the shell off and the egg out. Now that's all the shell I needed to take off. I don't have very much mess this time. I'm gonna hold my hand below the egg here so it doesn't go rolling across the counter, and I'm gonna blow really hard. I'm gonna create a lot of force. And there you go. I have an egg and one giant shell instead of a whole bunch of pieces. And now I'm gonna show you something with raw eggs. So, Many recipes call for you to separate your egg whites and your egg yolks. When I was young and learning how to cook, my mom taught me to separate egg yolks from egg whites by slowly pouring them back and forth from eggshell to eggshell. So on the plate, I have my whites now and I have a yolk. But that gets messy, I have eggs all over my hands now. Another way that my mom would tell me to do it was even pour the egg into my hands and let the yolks run out of your fingers. Again, super messy. But what you can do is you can put your egg and your yolk, dump it into a plate, use a water bottle to create some suction, or in this case, a soda bottle. Put your soda bottle over the top of your yolk, gently squeeze, sucks your yolk right up. And if this was what I was cooking, I would then be able to separate my egg yolk from my egg white. I'll do it again. So I'm going to break my egg, my yolk, and my white all together into one. I need to separate it gently, apply some force to an empty water or soda bottle, place it gently on top of your yolk, squeeze, and transfer to whatever you're cooking. Pretty cool, huh? All right, for our next experiment today, we are going to do some fun things with a few marshmallows. Now, what I've done is I've already started, I've put an empty soda bottle with some mini marshmallows, and I'm gonna add a few more. We're gonna learn about the fizz keeper here. So this is to show you how air pressure works with mini marshmallows. So I filled a soda bottle, maybe three quarters of the way of the marshmallows, and I purchased this thing online called a fizz keeper. And I'm gonna take it and screw it onto the top of this 20 ounce soda bottle. Now, I'm going to mark on my soda bottle the height of my marshmallows, which is approximately right here. And the way this works is 
I'm going to start pumping this. And it takes quite a bit of pumping. As you can already see what's happening to my marshmallows, my line was here and now my marshmallows are down here. So what is the air pressure doing it? By pumping the fist keeper, I'm applying more pressure into the bottle and the bottle is expanding a little bit, not a lot, but the force of that air is pushing down on my marshmallows. Hard to see in the video, but the marshmallows are shrinking up and they're compacting down. I'm gonna pump some more. What's cool is after a while, these start to look like the little mini dehydrated marshmallows you get in like a hot chocolate package. Essentially, the air is squeezing the marshmallows, forcing them. They're starting to look a little dry and squishy. As the air gets into the soda bottle, it gets harder and harder to push. But as you can see, I'm gonna mark it one more time. Our marshmallows are now down to where the third line is. Now, what do you think is gonna happen if I release the Fizz Keeper? So if this was a soda, I would have been adding more air into our soda, which is what increases the fizz in our soda. So if I took this off immediately, what happens when we shake a soda? You're right, it explodes everywhere. So when I take this off, what should happen is as that air is released out of the bottle, something's going to happen to our marshmallows. Let's see. Sounds like a soda, huh? Shake them back up to where we are. There you go. Right back up to where we started from. Pretty cool. So that's experiment and air pressure. The more air I put into that bottle, it compacted, pushed and pushed and pushed those marshmallows down. But when I released the air, you heard the air releasing and the marshmallows had no more pressure pushing them down and puffed back up to their original size. This is the Soda keep Keeper, can be purchased online. Pretty cool because you can add back in some fizz to your flat soda. Well, since we're working with sodas, I want to show you something else that's cool. I'm going to blow up a balloon using a soda. Now, we all know that sodas have carbon dioxide in them. That's the fizz. That's what we add the air to when we use the fizz keeper to make our sodas not flat again. So, I need something that activates the carbon dioxide in our soda. If I just shake it, it's already going to explode and I won't be able to um, get my balloon on fast enough. So I'll, I'm going to use the candy pop rocks to activate the soda or the carbon dioxide in our soda. So I'm going to open. Any soda will work. And I have a balloon. So the first thing I want to do is I want to dump the pop rocks into, now if you've never had pop rocks, they're kind of fun. They pop in your mouth when you put them in there. They're kind of a little explosion. I'm going to put them into my balloon. And what you don't want them to do is go right immediately into your soda. You want to let the reaction happen all at once. So then I'm gonna fit my balloon over the mouth of this, hold on to it, and I want to dump them in there all at once and then watch what happens with the balloon. As the carbon dioxide is released, it first, you might even see some of the soda go up into the balloon. You can hear it. And we are blowing up a balloon using Pop Rocks. Now, I didn't put a whole lot of Pop Rocks in here, so our balloon is not gonna get really big. But we'll let it go for a second. And there you have it. If you want to blow your balloon up, you could let it sit on here. Also use a two liter bottle of soda and about three packages of Pop Rocks and you can blow your balloon up to about the 11 or 12 inch size if you're using that size balloon. It's pretty awesome. All right, for our last experiment, I'm gonna show you something super simple, but kind of fun. 
Now this one uses fire, so of course use your safety precautions. And these are called tea bag rockets. And you won't be able to see on video, of course, how high this goes, but these go really, really high. This is just a tea bag. This is a large family size tea bag. And I don't need the tea from it. I just need the tube that the little um, tea bag comes in. So I'm going to take a pair of scissors and cut off the top. Do this in a safe place where when the tea bag rocket goes up, nothing um, up can catch on fire. So don't do it around curtains or where this would land that would catch on fire or anything. Just simply dump the tea out. You don't need that until you get this nice long hollow tube. And this is going to be an experiment in convection, an air current. I'm going to use a plate. Well, you can use the counter, but I don't want to put any burn spots on the counter. So we are going to just use a plate. And when I'm going to light this on fire, and when I light this on fire, the air current is going to burn from the top pushing down. When it reaches all the way down, the convection is going to be such a force that it's going to actually just lift the remaining part of the tea bag that has it burned up. And it will actually float pretty high up there. It'll hit my ceiling probably in this house. And then eventually the ash will come down. It takes a pretty good time. So let's see, these go really high if we can see how far it'll go anyway. And they go pretty fast, but it's a lot of fun to do these. Let's do this now. So we have three, two, one, lift off. There it goes. And it's still going. And I believe our rocket is now coming down. And if you hold on just a second, you'll be able to see the ash float down from what's left of the tea bag. And there it is. So that guys is a tea bag rocket. And that's all for today's science. Join us next week when we will be making edible slime. We're gonna make three different flavors. These are all edible slimes, not that we wanna eat them, but if little boys and girls do put them in their mouths, they're not too bad. So if you like what you've seen today, please remember to like, share, or comment, and we'll see you next week for edible slime.